Uh, generally speaking, with a group that has so many new guys that have relatively little to no game action, what are some of your primary focuses here over the next two weeks to get guys ready for that? Um, I'm not sure we waited till these last two weeks to do it, to be honest with you. You know, um, you, you, we are an inexperienced group, right? So <clears throat> sometimes you take for granted some of the things that some of those older guys were able to do pretty seamlessly. You know, even you go back to last spring ball, you install the whole offense day one and say, let's go, you know, 80% of it. Um, and maybe you go a little bit slower now, uh, which we which we did in fall camp or in the, in the spring. Uh, fall camp, we kind of threw it at them and we're – we're still struggling through the nuances of a big volume of a playbook, um, but we feel like that's going to get narrowed down once we get into a game week and we'll be able to make some good strides that way. Um, <clears throat> but certainly just the familiarity with, with the offense and, and everything that it entails, you know, because we do have a lot going on um, with how we go about attacking different defenses and, and whatnot and being able to get to certain things maybe unexpectedly in a given week. Um, you know, we'll see if that's something we can still do at a very high level, which we need to, you know, in order to be good. So um, that's the challenge, I think, right now. Um, <clears throat> and there's always a balance between being good mentally and being assignment sound. But it doesn't matter if you know where to go if you don't know how to do it and how to do it with power and physicality and that kind of thing, too. So um, being able to pull all that stuff together, you know, there's some practices maybe that are a little bit more focused towards the assignment part and some practices, you know, when you put pads on that are a little bit more geared towards, hey, I don't care what you do, do something hard and fast right here and play with power and, and show us who you are. So um, there's a lot of competition right now too, you know, which is good. Um, it's, it's a deep group, um, but it's not all sorted out yet. So um, this, I'm, I'm happy we've got quite a ways to go before we kick it off. What's the competition been like at the offensive line? I mean, everywhere. Yeah, like you know, from top to bottom. And how honestly. pleased are you with the? Um, yeah, you know, Coach Lobo is awesome. You know, you guys that have been around, you guys know how good he is at what he does, um, and what we do helps. You know, we recruit guys that are good at what we ask them to do. You know, which is going forward. Um, and we've we've been able to get bigger. I think. Um, Maybe some of our biggest guys are still a little bit young, but um, I think we'll be fine playing with power and coming off the ball. And we, you know, the you look at the first line that's going to go out there, and it's a group that's been around a while. They just haven't been on the field a lot, so nobody knows who they are. Um, but I, I've said this a lot. It seems like in the last couple of weeks, even when my buddies are asking me, "Hey, who's who are the guys? Who's going to be?" And it's like, well, nobody knew who Brad Roberts was, and. Until we threw Brad Roberts on the field and said, "Okay," and even us as coaches, like, "Well, let's see what happens here." Oh, he's pretty good, you know. And that's we tend to find guys like that. So um, there's a lot of people that are ready to step up. There are talented guys, I think. So, how is John Boucher's kind of talent at the quarterback or skill at the quarterback position been different from guys you've had in the years past? And also, kind of, how has the competition as a whole at the quarterback position been? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, every year is different. Um, every guy's different. Um, and maybe, you know, everybody you recruit is designed to fit what we do, you know, in the, in the broad general sense of it. Uh, but the nuts and bolts of what exactly they're great at maybe is a little bit different than you deploy what we do a little bit different. So, um, you know, Bush is a, he's an ultimate competitor. He understands the game. Um, you know, he's, He's a great leader. He's, he's really captured our team. Um, you know, so everything you want from that aspect, you know, he's all there. You know, he's majoring in Astro. You know, I mean, he's a typical Air Force quarterback, right? Um, but you get on the field and, and he can operate everything and he can come off a mesh and be quick. And he's, you know, 205 pounds and can play with a little bit of power. Obviously, he's not Zach Larrier, you know, from a speed standpoint. Um, but he's got a quick release and he can flip the ball around pretty good, you know. So, you know, we'll see how that <clears throat> develops over the course of time because everybody else has to be able to play to those strengths too um, on our team. So, you know, he can do everything we're asking him to do, um, you know, and I think he's ready to do it at a high level. He's been training for a while, you know. He's going into his fourth year with us and, and, and he's ready to get on the field. Did you kind of see that at the end of last year, voice – Boise State and then when he was yeah. put in versus I think Melbourne. we probably saw it the year before that you know even before last season you know when he was a freshman at the end of that year um, progressing in a manner where we were like hey I, 
I think we're going to have a good one here. Um, you know, unfortunately for him, he kind of missed his entire spring ball that year, which kind of prevented him from really competing to get into the mix a little bit last year, you know, just because there were so many senior laden guys on the, in the room. Um, he really just didn't have time to compete with him to go earn that spot. And it kind of took the season to get him to the end there where we felt like, you know, we were ready to put him in. Um, but I think the fact that he got some of that experience, you know, was good. You know, he, he saw what it was like, you know, on the road. He was able to play against, you know, a fast defense. Um, and he traveled with us every, every single week. So he understands what a season looks like and what that looks like from a preparation standpoint. Um, and he's not the only guy we can win with. We've, we've got a couple other guys in the room there that I think are pretty talented dudes that, that can go in there and, and help us win football games if they have to as well. My last question, uh, off of that experience still in Carson, do you feel like he can take that next step because he's got reps like last year and then he can kind of build off of that? Yeah, I think the same. You know, Dylan, he's proven that he can do it in a game, right? We counted on him in, in some really big situations last year and he performed. Um, and that's only going to get better. I mean, he was he ran this offense in high school, was <laughs> – all-time Washington leader, you know, you look at a bunch of stats from back in his high school days and it's off the charts, you know, of, of the production that he had. So he's well-versed in what he does and, and his, his body's put together. And, you know, when you show up as a junior here, you you tend to, to make a pretty good leap. So um, we're kind of expecting that from – and that, that wouldn't surprise us one bit if he played really well. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you said earlier every year is different. I know last year you guys kind of relied pretty heavy on the run game. What are you liking about last year? Are you kind of looking to do the same this year heading into this season or talk more about the differences in the run game? Yeah, I'm not sure that's ever going to change, to be honest with you. I think we're always going to rely on that. Um, but maybe how we do it is always going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, when you have Brad Roberts, you just turn around and hand it to him every snap and the good things happen. And and maybe other years, you know, you've got – other year you've got, you know, a quarterback that's a really good runner. Um, or you've got guys on the edge that are really good, like Cade Remsburg a couple years ago, and all of a sudden he's a 1,000-yard rusher. Um, so every year is a little bit different from that standpoint. But I, I think we're pretty talented across the board, to be honest with you, no matter how we want to go attack somebody, whether it's on the perimeter or up the middle or with the quarterback. I think, I think we've got some guys at every one of those spots that we're not afraid to put the ball in their hands. One of the random storylines of the year in the conference is so many new new coaches, new staffs, and you guys. I mean, what new staffs, coaches? I, I, what's that like? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know? Well, that what kind of advantages? You know, yeah. you talk about what you run. You've run it for so long. You've seen little nuances. You've adjusted to this and that. Like, what kind of advantage does that give you when you have a head coach and an offense coordinator that have been here for so long? Yeah, I think it's a huge thing for us compared to every other team. Not from only from the coaching standpoint, but the player standpoint. We don't have the same player turnover everybody else does, you know, with the transfer portal and all the stuff that's happening now. I mean, every other school's roster is t completely turning over almost every year, you know. And um, the fact that our guys come in and they're in their third and fourth and fifth year playing in the system, they only get better from that. And, you know, the, the technique gets a little bit tighter and, and the execution gets a little bit better. Um, you know, so I think that's a huge thing. And I think the fact that we've been all, all been on the same page for so long, um, the fact that we're able to make adjustments as fast as we do, I think that's a huge part of it, you know, in us winning games. Um, and, the, and the struggle, honestly, is there's so many new staffs, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. Um, and, and the staffs are getting younger and younger, and our offense is getting more archaic and archaic that nobody else across the country is doing it, so you can't go find film of what you think might, somebody might do against you either. So... Um, that's kind of a new fun challenge for us. Sometimes when you got the Craig Bowles of the world that have been around forever playing against you, you're like, okay, here comes Wyoming. We know that defense or whatever. And now it's, you know, and, and they'll, they'll be similar. But, you know, you look at other teams and you're like, okay, well, <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's a first-year coordinator and never seen the option before. Wonder what we're going to get this week, um, which is where we rely on that continuity of, of, of the system um, so heavily, I think. So um, us being able to, to adjust on the fly, you know, from week to week um, and in the middle of a game is kind of paramount for us. That's why the fall camp, going back to your, your question earlier, you know, what are you really trying to develop in your, in your team? Um, 
the ability to understand the offense completely so that you can go from place to place whenever you need to, I think is important for us. And how different are things now? And I guess how grateful are you to be at Air Force in this age of the portal and, you know, everything, NIL, everything that goes into recruiting elsewhere, whereas you guys probably don't have many changes from 10 years ago, I would think, whereas no. everything else is night and day. And just the amount of workload that probably takes for everybody else. Like, are you guys, do you guys have an advantage of maybe a work-life balance that other coaches don't have? Yes. Um, <clears throat> There's a, not a lot of reasons for us to leave this place. Um, you start looking at the staff and why they've, there's been so much continuity. The quality of life here is pretty good for us. You know, We live in a great place. We go to coach a bunch of great kids. We work for one of the best coaches in the country. Um, we're not slaving around all year long. You know, we, we get some off time in the summer. We know how to do that work-life balance. Um, and for all of the buddies that we have out there that are coaching at other places, they've got some nightmare stories that we don't have. You know, um, they've got stories of kids coming to their offices demanding certain things that our kids would never think about coming to us with. And that's comforting, you know, to know that we coach kids like that and we're at a place like this that has a bigger, bigger mission than maybe just winning and losing. Um, even though that's all what we want to do every week, we kind of understand that and we know we're a part of that. So there's lots of reasons to stay and not a lot of reasons to ever want to look elsewhere. Um, but. Everybody else always tells us all the time about all the struggles that we have and challenges and this or that, and, and a lot of those are true. Um, they, can, they can very easily be flipped the other way around um, and be seen as strengths for us, you know, like you're talking about with the continuity and people not leaving and um, the recruiting part of it, you know, for us. Everybody used to say as coaches, oh, you guys got to recruit so many more guys or whatever that looks like. And, now you look at other places and they're recruiting just as many guys as we are just because they're recruiting five classes at once. I mean, they're, re they're recruiting their own players who are juniors. They're recruiting transfer kids. They're recruiting guys out of high school. They're recruiting JUCO kids. I mean, the volume's the same, you know. I just get to recruit better kids, in my opinion. No offense, everybody else out there. <laughs> to that point of... You, know, you being here, a lot of pride in, in the way things have gone and con the consistency. Falcon Stadium got um, a big upgrade as an alum, as a player, a coach. Um, how meaningful is it that they're putting money into that, making it bigger, better? When you go out on the recruiting trail, that look at the things that we're doing here. What does that renovation mean to you? I'm fired up. I, I'll be honest with you. Like this is, I've been here how long? I, mean, I can't. I stopped counting. 21 something like that or i'm going on year 21 i think it's been a long time so like the stadium's never changed you know i'm fired up to go walk into that stadium and go coach in that stadium you know um as i can imagine a player is and i can imagine all of the all of our other buddies that are grads that are coming back like they can't wait to come back and watch a game here um you know you look around our league and who's got a better stadium and, and, and venue than what we do with the mountains and the backdrop and what game day looks like with the cadets and flyovers and jets and parachute parachutes and who, who's got it better really you know um I feel like I'm stealing Harbaugh's line there who's got it better than us um but I but I think that's real you know there's a lot of a lot of alumni that are coming back and asking us they can't wait to show up you know for Navy weekend or Hall of Fame weekend or CSU weekend or whatever and they want to be a part of that East Club. They want to go be on the mezzanine and, and do all that. I mean, it's – I'm fired up, and I've been here forever, you know. So I can't wait to go coaching it. Assuming that Dylan sees more carries, heavily featured in the offense, I think only four times he had carried the ball more than 11 times. Physically, if he does get more reps, how is he – how will he be able to withstand carrying the ball Dylan's, uh, Dylan's body breaking is not something I'm all that worried about, to be honest with you. Um, knock on wood. You know, when I went to go recruit him up in Washington, his dad was his high school football coach, and I walked into the weight room, and uh, he's over in the corner, and he's kind of a no-nonsense, quiet kid. But he's over in the corner. He's got 405 pounds on the squat rack. And uh, I'm like, man, are you squatting today? He's like, no, I'm just warming up, coach. You know, like Dylan's – his, his body will be just fine. So I'm not worried about the number of carries that he got last year compared to what he's about to get. Um, and we're always going to space that out a little bit too, you know, if we can. Ideally, we don't want anybody to get 35 carries. We've, we've done that, obviously. However, um, 
we're talented enough in that room where that doesn't have to be the case. So I think we'll be, I think we'll be good there. Okay. I got two, two, one, Go on, two guys uh, with, with Dylan, coach Calhoun talks about how you were the one who were like, Hey, you got to watch this film. Like how, how did that play out? How did you find him? And how did you, uh, I was actually recruiting somebody else on the team. Um, their, their starting offensive lineman is a guy that we also recruited is on our team, Nate Elwood. They played together. Um, and Dylan came direct. Nate went to the prep school, so um, they ends up being a year behind him here. But um, you just kept watching the tape, and you, you like you know how the productive of a kid he was. Um, but in high school, he was probably a little bit undersized for what we were looking for at the time. You know, he's 192 pounds. You wondered could he ever get to 210, 215, something like that. Um, so he probably wasn't one of those initial guys that we just like went after right off the bat kind of just waited through the senior season and we had a need and he was still hanging around there not having any offers and took a shot at a coach's kid who was really tough and it's worked out well. There's a lot of stories like that if you haven't noticed around Air Force yeah. that the guy that didn't get recruited very much and all of a sudden he shows up and nobody wants him and turns into something. You know, Brad Roberts, Mike Thiessen, there's a million of them <laughs> in between, you know. Well, with Boucher, because he was the class of 21. Same. So, yeah, I'd read about, you know, his high school experience, and it sounded like nobody was seeing We didn't him. offer him till after signing day, I don't think, in February. You know, I never went to go see him at his high school, his home. I mean, we no kidding, called him in late January, said, hey, are you like, we thought you were a baseball kid. Are you really want to play football? <laughs> yeah, coach. Was that COVID-related, or was that just? No, that's just the, how the recruiting process went. Man, he, under the radar kind of in a non-highly recruited area and somebody found him and forwarded him to us and here we go. Obviously the biggest story of the last week was was Bo Richter. What was your reaction to, to what you saw and I'm sure you weren't overly surprised. Well I, I think the, the Bo's uh, so so talented and physically gifted that uh, you know Coach Maines, Coach uh, uh, Whitlow did a f phenomenal job with him and in, in really developing him into a, uh, a, a very very good pass rusher there in about about a year and a half. So uh, just to see him go and take those skills and uh, you know he talked about it, he just did what he did in college. So it, it was exciting to see that and uh, you know we I can remember back three years ago Bill Sheridan, legendary coach, that was with us said, hey we got to get him in somehow. First game he stepped in at linebacker, got a pick against Nevada. So nothing surprises us with Bo. He was a, he played defensive back then too, didn't he? he? Well, he played like some uh, some outside linebacker. He played uh, inside linebacker. He played defensive end. He played a lot. But once he settled into that position, you know, really felt a very diligent guy as far as, uh, you know, always wanted to know the details, why he's doing something. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's the same way with the Vikings, you know, just a tremendous uh, – you know, just sponge up there and taking it all in from the coaching. To that point, you guys, your defense has benefited greatly from one or two really good rushers off the edge, whether it be from the linebacker position or with their hand on the ground, Ramsey, Sanford, Richter. Uh, who's Who are some of the guys that you'll lean upon in that capacity this year? Well, I think we have a, a lot of talent in the these past few years, you know, the – same crews played, but we've we've had some we've stacked up some good recruiting classes, and uh, I think you'll see uh, uh, David Santiago do a great job. Uh, Luke Meyer, um, Aiden Schwartz, obviously Peyton Zadroik's going to be a factor in the middle, but uh, you know I, I think they'll continue to get better and better, and uh, you know we'll play some sophomores this year, and so it'll be exciting to see those guys go out there, and you know you never know what our sophomores obviously haven't played a lot, but uh, they are very talented. Can be. Uh, moving him over to free safety, kind of what's the thought process on that? And he's going to be the leader of that defensive back group? It is. I think in college football, you better be good in the back end. And uh, we've been pretty experienced back there. And, and just what he's done in the last, you know, he didn't really go through spring football. Can be started there. But uh, what he's done with that secondary back there is just a. Uh, uh, his leadership, his communication, you know, we've got two experienced corners with him. Uh, Levi Brown, the other safeties, played a little bit. So um, we're excited about what Camby gives us back there. He's a very mature guy and, uh, you know, really has embraced the switch. And, uh, you know, I think I think we'll, we'll expect good things, a lot like the other guy that played that position. He didn't do too bad. <laughs> and uh, 
cornerback position, how's the position battle going right there? It's going well. Just like last year when, uh, you know, uh, the Jamari and Jerome are so gifted uh, physically. Both of them are six foot six foot plus long corners. Uh, Trey Williams is, is a dynamo. I mean, Trey's a guy that's going to make plays, and he's uh, he's got a tremendous uh, energy out there. And uh, you know, he's a guy that's very difficult to keep off the field. So uh, you know, it's who knows. We may try to get all three of them out there at one time, but uh, we certainly feel good with what we've we've got there. Coach Jackson's done a phenomenal job with them. And so, uh, you know, we're excited about them and some young guys behind them coming up. The, uh, you know, we talked about the up front and then in the secondary. What about in the middle, the inside backers? Like, how important is that position going to be in, in having success? It, it, it'll, be, it'll be very important, obviously. We, you know, with uh, the guys that played there, a lot of played a lot of football. And, uh, you know, Coach Lamb's done a great job behind the scenes with, during the last couple of years, uh, you know, working with uh, Asaro and, uh, and Zach Juckel. And these are two guys that they're pretty experienced. Zach got in, in in some key key times last year, but uh, I think athletically Zach can be as athletic as anybody we've had at the linebacker position right now. Uh, made a lot of plays here in the, the preseason, and so he'll be very gifted. Uh, Sorrow's a big physical guy, so we're excited about those two. And there's some young, that sophomore, uh, sophomore class with – Luke Fisher and Blake Fletcher and Ariane Burr from here in Colorado Springs. Those are those are some young guys that'll be pushing, uh, you know, both Zach and uh, and Asaro. And plus uh, um, uh, Grant Yule. Grant Yule's a, a guy that's, uh, you know, uh, we played a lot of those guys at the academy that are that are uh, maybe a step uh, step step be uh, slower than you know what you'd like, or maybe not quite physically gifted, but very talented player. So. You know, with all the success you've had defensively here the past couple of years, how exciting is it to kind of see if the system can withstand a massive turnover? <laughs> it's exciting in the sense that you, you're going to get something new every day, and with these guys, and and we got to go through, we got to learn through these, uh, you know, through some of the, you know, you're not going to get the consistency in the, uh, if you're going to get some errors, and in, in, in those are, that's going to expect it with with young kids, but I think. These guys, as they mature, you're going to see a different team from when we go out there at Merrimack and then when we're playing, you know, middle of October, end of October. And that's our job as coaches to keep continue to develop, developing guys. And, uh, you know, I think you'll see a lot of strides with our young guys. With the, you know, you talked about the sophomore class. Like, how much are you guys benefiting from the internal competition from these younger guys? Because I've seen the recruiting rankings and everything. I know there's got to be a lot of talent sitting there waiting to break through. Like, how much better are you because of that? Well, I, th I think, it, you know, anytime competition pushes you, you know, makes you better. Coach Lamondola does a great job. You know, we got different guys. We got another new new in, uh, starter this week. Uh, Coach Means and Coach uh, Gibson have, have been rotating a lot of guys. So it, it, it literally, you know, I would say other, you know, our corners are good competition, but and can be, but everything's up for grabs with these guys. You know, our, our nickel position with Lincoln and we move Kenny Beard there. And so those two, it's good. The great competition brings it out of you. And so, uh, you know, you'll, you'll probably see a lot of different ro different rosters. You know, there may be movement throughout the season. You know, we haven't had a lot of, you know, once the guy started, he pretty much started the rest of the season. I think with ours, they'll continue to com uh, compete all year long. What are some of the, the things that stand out to you that make Peyton Zedroy so strong, so good? Uh, in the middle. Well, I, th I think you hit it. Hit it is obviously the guy. He's got a tremendous desire to play. I mean, just his commitment to play. He, he has played some games in the past where you know you kind of shake your head on how he did it, and uh, that desire to play and compete. But but he's likely the most physically st strongest guy on our team. And so, if you looked at him dimension wise, you know we do a great job. We're as long and and and. Uh, Good looking as a defensive we've had. We've got long players all over the board. You know, Peyton kind of defies that. You know, he doesn't have the wingspan you want. He's obviously not as tall as you want. But uh, you talk to fellow opponents, you talk to fellow offensive line coaches, they do not like blocking Peyton. So. Coach Thiessen kind of lit up when talked about the, the renovations to Falcon Stadium, the way it looks um, as an alum who's played games there, coached games there. What's your excitement level for what that does on game day, what it does recruiting-wise, and everything in between? 
Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, it's named after a former linebacker, so we're pretty excited about Jack and uh, Vianna, the, the, you know, what they've done for the program, but everybody. I mean, it's just been a, uh, just the alumni, the people in the community, everybody's come behind, and it is an impressive project. When we bring recruits in, I mean, they just sit and stare at it. So it's, uh, you know, from, the, from I-25, it doesn't really look much different, but uh, once you get in that stadium, it's, it's an impressive sight. We've got to see it, I think, you know, once people go in it, there's area for former alumni. I know a lot of our alumni are excited about coming back. You know, now they're just not coming back for Navy. They're coming back for three and four games. So it'll be excited, just the uh, enthusiasm, uh, you know, and guys getting to be able to use it. I think for us, being able to use it on recruiting weekends, things like that will be great. Taking our recruits up there before games, that'll be impressive. It's hard to find a place like that, you know, uh, that, our, uh, that our recruits will see. Um, going back to Peyton, he's obviously dealing with an injury. Is there kind of a game plan early in the season, kind of get him progressive more reps each and every week, or you guys just you feel confident he's ready? Our training, our training staff, you know, Kaz and, and and all of our trainers do a phenomenal job, and I think what uh, what they've done with him just on a monitoring his work. Camby golf, Camby's not practicing the whole. You know, we're doing, a, especially our veteran guys, we're giving them time off, making sure that uh, they're ready to go. And, and, and you know, we're going to be, be careful with Peyton. You know, Peyton wants to go out there right now. But, uh, you know, we know that when, when he does get out there, he's going to be, you know, he doesn't need the reps like a lot of the guys do up front, you know. But, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's always the first one in here. Sunday morning, you see him coming, coming back from church. He's the first one here. So he's... It's not going to be from a lack of effort or lack of time in the training room. And uh, so I, I, I fully expect him back to, you know, where he left off last year, you know, here within, you know, in September. Uh, take us through the, the position change, how it was pitched to you, your initial reaction, and how you're kind of adjusting to that. Oh, so the position change, yeah, I'm playing free safety instead of uh, the nickel position I play, you know, kind of always throughout. Uh, I was at free safety freshman year, so it's not too – much of a difference, but um, yeah, they just told me uh, they want to move me to free safety just because our defense is a very impactful position. So um, I was ready. I said, Coach, move me anywhere, you know? So yeah. How did the, what amounts to basically a year off from game action, how did that change you as a player, if at all? Did you kind of take a step back and realize some things, uh, pick up different things? How are you a better player if, if you are just from being? taking that step back for an entire year and just watching? I think that um, taking a step back um, really kind of slowed the game down. Um, just being a little older, um, seeing more ball and all that really just slowed the game down. And I realized just how simple it is. You know, before I always think it was just some complicated thing, but honestly, it's very simple and you don't really need to do too much besides your job. So. Uh, just taking or just not playing that whole entire year, maybe realize that. So, yeah. How do you feel like your skills as a defensive back playing kind of that nickel role translate to free safety? I think that um, my skills and nickel, um, just being closer to the ball, um, being more in the run fit. Um, the free safety is also in the run fit a lot too, but not as much as the nickel. Um, so in terms of that, I feel like um, – it fits pretty good. I mean, obviously, the free safety does have to go in coverage. It has to backpedal more. has to close the middle of the field. You know, it has to do a lot more just in the back end and coverage-wise. Um, so I have to work on that a little bit. But I think in terms of, you know, being in the run and, you know, fitting my gap and stuff, it translates pretty well. How, is it, how exciting was it to see two of your former teammates, Bo and Trey, playing a uh, preseason game? Oh, that was really exciting. I mean, both of them have really good games, and both were on special teams and had some chance to make some good plays during the game. But it was definitely really exciting to see both of them uh, just, you know, battle it out and everything. You know, yeah, it was good. <laughs> Going off of that, having guys like them last year to lean on, how has it been for you so far this season and stepping up in that leadership role? Oh, so the leadership role, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm the oldest one on the team right now, so – it's kind of a little different, you know, um, just being my birthday's, you know, kind of late and stuff. But always on the team, uh, leadership role, I mean, it's been kind of challenging and stuff just with the young group 
and stuff, um, just because they're a lot younger than me, um, trying to help them out in different scenarios, trying to see the game kind of like how I see it, you know, um, get them to be able to call things out early, you know, communication-wise and everything. But, um, yeah, in terms of, like, a leader, um, kind of like the spotlight's on me. So, yeah, I got to feel that. Hey, um, you missed a lot of football, and this is kind of an obvious question, but how excited are you for that Merrimack game just because you haven't played in so long? I'm actually very excited. Um, just missing, just not playing for a whole entire year. Um, that was very different. I haven't done that since I was like four years old, um, not playing football. Um, so I'm definitely really excited to hit someone different, you know, um, get that adrenaline rush, the butterflies of playing football, you know, like actually playing a game. I'm very excited for it. Um, it should be a good one. How tough was last year on you? Last year was very tough because um, I was kind of battling if I should just end up graduating or if I should, you know, potentially, um, you know, try to get a medical red shirt to potentially, you know, come back uh, and play another year. Um, I was also battling, you know, if, you know, my injury would affect me in terms of uh, going to school, you know, having to, like, roll around a scooter the whole time when it's snow outside, you know. That's not, you know, very favorable, especially with ice, you know. So um, just a lot of different challenges. But then also it was, it was tough seeing my team play, you know, without me contributing to, especially when we were on the losing streak. That was, you know, really tough because uh, I didn't know what to do and I didn't know what to say to them, you know. But, yeah, it was definitely tough. When you talk about, you know, being in the spotlight as a leader, what about as a player? Because I would think, you know, the spur position is rarely, you know, it's never in the spotlight in terms of stats and all that. Whereas free safety, you know, you get the bigger tackles, you get the interceptions, things like that. Like, do you are you excited about that kind of proposition going into your senior year? Um, I mean, really it just has to deal with however I can con contribute. It's not necessarily a spotlight that, that I really care about. Um, it's just how it's going to, you know, contribute the best. Um, obviously, the free safety does, you know, show up on the stat boards more just because it's doing a whole bunch of things at once, you know, rather the, the nickel spur position is kind of more in the run fit and doesn't really drop back and pass. But, I mean, at the bottom line, I'm just trying to contribute to the team. And then I know, you know, when we talked in Vegas, you were excited about this young roster. Like, now that you've seen everything in practice for a few weeks, like, how was that excitement level and who has kind of impressed you? My excitement is still the same. Uh, I, I I really think we have a lot of talent just with this young group. Um, they show them very good, bright spots, um, particularly who's, like, impressed me. Um, Casey Beard has stepped up in that nickel position. Um, Levi Brown has been showing some really promising stuff at strong safety. Um, just with our linebacker group, um, Zach Juckel, uh, he's been doing really good stuff right there, too. So, I mean, we definitely got some really good young talent. With Casey in particular, are you kind of mentoring? I mean, he's a senior too, right? So he's not, it's not like he's a young guy, but because you've played so many snaps of that position, is he leaning on you, kind of like, hey, what are you seeing here and that kind of stuff? I mean, he has, we have really good coaches and stuff that are coaching him up too, but if he asks me a question, I'm you know, more than willing to you know, step in and pitch him my advice and stuff. Um, he, I mean, he comes with me for a little bit of stuff, but our coach is pretty much taking care of most stuff. Kimmy, you said you, you struggled for a little bit with the should you even continue to play football. When did you decide that you wanted to play, and what were some of the things that led up to that decision? What what flipped that or what made it clear to you? Um, I feel like it was just going to be really hard to let the game go, knowing um, there's – I think I could potentially keep playing, you know, beyond college and stuff so it was just do I want to live with like regret of like trying you know even just giving it a chance and stuff so I think that's what made it clear is like there could be a chance and why not just have a swing at it you know if I, if I swing and I miss you know I miss you know but at least I gave it a chance you know so yeah that was like the clear moment. Mike came in here earlier and said that they were late in the game, or it sounds like everybody was late in the game on you. Um, when did you first kind of get an idea that playing football at the Air Force Academy was, was a possibility? Um, yeah, no. So they offered me like in January. So I had no other schools talking to me and nothing. 
Uh, it was kind of just like a week-long decision, you know. Talked to my parents a little bit, looked up the school, didn't have a visit or anything. So I kind of just showed up and made what uh, I was given. So he, he mentioned that you were a baseball player and um, talked to you and said you're still interested in playing football. Was there a point that you said, all right, maybe, maybe I'm not going to play college football, or did you keep pressing that this was going to be a possibility? Yeah, no. I mean – I'd never thought of not playing football. I definitely thought of playing baseball and football. But, um, yeah, ever since I got here, I've wanted to play football. Ever since I was little, I've always wanted to play D1 football. So I definitely wasn't going to miss this opportunity. How is getting the reps last year in game for Boise State and then UNLV kind of helped you this off season and really heading into this year? Yeah, no, uh, those, those few reps I've had, um, definitely helped me out a lot, especially in Boise, just because the atmosphere there was kind of crazy. You know, they had 48,000 people there day after Thanksgiving. So that kind of uh, <laughs> welcomed me to the whole Division One football thing and uh, definitely looking forward to this year. Do you feel like your skill sets are a little bit different than starting quarterbacks Air Force has had in the past where maybe you can throw it a little bit more? Um, yeah, definitely a little bit uh, different. Uh, I feel like uh, I can throw the ball a little bit better, but at the same time, you know, I still have that ability to run the ball. So um, offense won't change much, but um, just looking forward to what uh, it's going to happen this year. Going off that, last year, Zach led the team to 6-0 and to start the season. How are you looking to do that same thing and lead Air Force to success to start the season? Um, I mean, that's a tough question, but uh, I just, you know, we're just going to uh, – go at this one game at a time and um, hopefully build that chemistry in the first few games and keep it rolling throughout the whole year. John, now that you enter the season as, you know, the starter, what, when you weren't playing, was there anything mentally you did to prepare you for this season? Um, Coach Thiessen always told me there was an opportunity of me going into the game last year. So uh, that kind of just always kept me on my toes in practice, watching film, uh, and then just paying attention in the games because I never knew when I, my opportunity was going to come. So that definitely helped me out coming into this year. Yeah, You were like a relief pitcher then. Right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Were you a pitcher in baseball? Uh, no, chance? I played uh, shortstop and outfield. Okay. So. Um, and then before last season when you were here and you knew like the chances of you playing were probably slim to none, how did you, how did you just keep preparing for the opportunity to get to this point? Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew uh, just just the way that uh, you know we we do football here that my time was going to come. So just keeping my eye, you know, in the future and knowing that my time was going to come, just allowed me to you know keep building my strengths and and just getting to know all the guys that I would play with th this year. Do you still keep up at all with Zach or Jensen? Um, a little bit. I mean, uh, I just went to uh, on ops to South Carolina and I I messaged Zach there, um, but not really. So, and now that you know, how excited are you for that? Just that Mary Mac game to come, and is it maybe keep you up a little bit at night? Um, yeah, it, it it does a little bit. Uh, still gonna treat it like another game, but uh, I'm I'm glad that you know it'll be my first start, and this is kind of like my year to show what I can do. I read a story about when you were being recruited, or basically it was your coach saying it would be a tragedy if you didn't get an offer, but at that time, because of COVID, just nobody had seen you. Like, what was that time like? I mean, and it hit your, your junior year, right? Fall of your, or spring of your junior year? Senior year. Oh, spring of your junior year? Yeah. Senior year. Or senior. I'm, yes, sir. Okay. So how did, yeah, how did that impact the ability for people to see you? And yeah, I mean, it was so late, like, to where it was after signing day and everything, and uh, they just ended up calling me one day, and they had seen my film. They said they wanted me to come, so I was like, I mean, this is the only opportunity I have. So at that point, I kind of just blindly said I was going to come here and just was going to see what was going to happen, I mean. And I know your senior year, at least, your rushing numbers were pretty big. Had that been like that your junior year, or did you kind of show a new skill as a senior? Yeah, so uh, my junior year, we changed. We, we were in the wing tee pretty much, so – it wasn't as much running from the quarterback. It was more like, you know, the the uh, tailbacks and stuff and the running backs. And then my senior year, we kind of – all our coaches left, and we went to gun and more spread offense. So uh, I was able to just, you know, on some pass plays, get some more run yards and 
that's how it kind of happened. And having gone through a coaching change, because it was like a long time staff, right, that left before oh, yeah. your senior year, yep. coming here where it's like basically the most continuity in the nation, how nice is that to like know that the coaching staff is building on, you know, information that they've had for years and years and a program that's so entrenched? Yeah, no, it was great. I mean, you can trust pretty much any coach out here. If you don't know what you're doing, just ask literally any coach and they'll, they'll pretty much know what you're supposed to do. So it was, it was, it was great. And are you an astro? Yes, what is astro astronautical, astronautical engineer? Yes, sir. How did you how did you land on that? Um, yeah, so uh, I just recently took our like core astro class here, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so I kind of like I like you know space and and just things to do with space. So I figured that that was the best route for me. How much time does that take up? I mean, as you're trying to play quarterback as well. Um, so. This semester isn't too bad. Uh, I don't have crazy classes, like crazy hard classes. Uh, I cut, so what I did is I just told my ACK advisor, like she knows that I play football. So in the fall, she kind of lined up my load a little bit. And then in the spring is when it kicks off. So that kind of helps me out a little bit, but just, you know, balancing time, you know, the time I have, just getting my work done before I come out here definitely helps. Coach Thiessen said you, you had missed uh, an important time in spring ball, your sophomore year. When did you? When do you think, and looking back, that you made the biggest jump of okay, I'm ready for this. When did that happen? So I definitely think that was like uh, fall of uh, my sophomore year because uh, I had surgery my spring uh, freshman year. So uh, just getting the mental rep spring and uh, coming out in the fall and getting live reps, you know, in a blue shirt, getting hit. That definitely, you know, made build my confidence back up and uh, kind of just let me know that I can compete with these guys. I saw about 45 minutes ago, an hour ago, the uh, the football team released the uniforms, the special ops. What are your thoughts on them? I think they're pretty sweet. Uh, I've always been kind of like the little nerdy guy when it comes to special ops and stuff. You know, I play a bunch of games that involve shooting and stuff. So once I heard about the theme this year, I was definitely looking forward to them. And just like the little details they have on the uniforms, uh, it's, it's pretty sick. Um, were, you, were you at all, I mean, you wanted an opportunity to play D1 ball, but was there any apprehension like Air Force is a little more difficult than most colleges? Yeah, so the thing was uh, I really didn't know how difficult Air Force was. I didn't even know what Air Force was until I looked it up that day. So... Um, I kind of just, it was my only option, and I was, like, just going to take it. So whatever came with it, that's that's what I was going to deal with. Is that kind of your personality a little bit, a little adventurous? Like, <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Uh, you know, I always just enjoy the little things in life and just kind of go with the flow. So definitely. And then one dumb question. Could you pronounce your last name just it, so we don't It is it? Boucher. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's Boucher. Yes, sir. Wow. Just like uh, the Water Boy, the movie. And <laughs> Bobby Boucher. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Did you need? Did you, uh, what What was the, What was the injury as a freshman? So uh, I tore my labrum and my throwing shoulder. Yeah, uh, it was my second time. I did it also sophomore year of high school. So I've gone through it before, which also kind of helped me get through it because I knew I was going to be fine. So it wasn't. It wasn't too like. It didn't take too much of a toll on me. Okay. And is pickle juice still still <laughs> your uh, secret sauce? Um, yeah, I think definitely it's, you'll, you'll see me out there with it this year uh, now that I'm playing because I sweat, like, a lot. So it, it just helps me from cramping.